blissful students, staff, alumni, and community alike. Welcome back to another radiant episode of Alfie Hubbard. My name is Michael Serpal, and this week we will be discussing the glorious health benefits of gardening. Whether you're growing your own food, incorporating greenery in your workspace, composting for a more sustainable future, breathing life and vibrancy into your front or backyards, or just pulling out some pesky weeds. Gardening is universal. It's for everyone. And the vast social, mental, and physical health benefits can't be ignored. Today, we brought in the perfect subject who knows gardening like no other. His passion for gardening is evident through his popular gardening television show, The Silly's Garden on Channel 31 and 72, along with regular appearances on 3AW, SBS Radio, and through print media with his successful gardening magazines, Good Organic Gardening, and Vasili's Garden to Kitchen, which circulates Australia-wide. He has been an ambassador to many environmental and health awareness organisations, and not only is he an accomplished gardener and entertainer, but he's also a gifted musician. And if we ask him politely, he may just give us his trademark rendition of the Greek Zorba dance on his trusty accordion. We've come to the end of another great show. It is raining. We've got them lined up. We're dying to eat. We're going to have a great feast here and to see if they can dance a Zorba. You ready to dance? Yeah. And from one fellow Coburgian to another, Vasily Canadias, welcome to Healthy Habits today. Michael, mate, what a wow, what a long intro. <laughs> You've got a lot of accolades, mate. I had to try and mention all of them. Oh, I'm glad you didn't mention them all because <laughs> some of them should be left untouched or, you know, left alone under the rocks, mate. How are you? Doing very, very well, mate. And it's an absolute joy and a pleasure to have you on Vasily's, well, to have you on Healthy Habits. I was about to say Vasily's Garden for I almost stole <laughs> your wine there, mate. It's a pleasure to be here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I like your show too, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Vasily. That means a lot. And talking about shows, I reckon it was maybe over 10 years ago since you actually had my family and I on board of Vasily's Garden. Also drank some of my dad's fermented beer. Do you remember that, Vasily? <laughs> How can I forget that and the little mini village that he's created down there? That's, that, that's a very memorable show for me. I cannot forget that. Amazing place, an amazing place. Uh, all credit to mum and dad because they put a lot of effort into it. Now, you've obviously been keeping very productive during this period of time with your regular media appearances, the Vasili's Garden Kitchen to Magazine publication and yep. plenty of fresh weekly content on YouTube and also your social media pages as yeah. well. Now... You would have to say you've been flourishing like your gardening during this lockdown period in Victoria. How has it been for you and have you managed to keep on top of everything? Uh, mate, if, I, if you want to do that analogy, I'm like a weed in the garden at the moment, just sprouting up everywhere, aren't I? Um, it's a bit of a challenge, but we're enjoying it. I've taken the good out of the bad is what we should all be taking in this situation, these current times. So we've tried to convert something from, you know, the frustrations of everybody's lockdown and embracing nature. And that's something that I've always done. And I've always uh, preached that, I suppose. And in that respect, I am enjoying it. Yeah, everything's growing. I'm growing with it. And every day I'm still learning. You never stop learning because nature has so much to share. And we embrace it wholeheartedly. So yeah, no, loving it, mate. And that's a beautiful analogy there about life and about always willing to grow. Now, Vasily, let's take your journey back to the very start. What actually inspired you to get into gardening? Were you stranded in a jungle or an overgrown garden? Did you have overflowing composting Coburg that you had to dispose <laughs> of? Was there a lemon tree that needed natural watering or were you in the top of your class for growing grass in a polystyrene cup or am I way off the mark here, Vasily? <laughs> You, you, you pretty much summed it all up. I love food. I was caught up in the jungle. I love growing grass, the edible stuff. And I had a lemon tree as well that I used to piddle under. Uh, and I grew veggies with my father. As a young kid, he would get me involved in picking and harvesting and um, even fertilizing. And it was just part of my growing up, I suppose. Mum and dad were always in the garden. And dad uh, converted the old home in Coburg into a vegetable garden. So he dozed the house. And, and turned the entire block where the garden center is at the moment into a vegetable garden. And I remember to this day saying to myself, 
he's a nutcase. I'll never, ever do this. How could you possibly doze a house and turn it into a vegetable garden? Fast track 30 years later or 40 years later, here I am, number 17, Munro Street, no house, high rise buildings on either side and I've got a little veggie garden in the middle of it like a nutcase. It doesn't stop for us, no, we love it. That's absolutely brilliant, Vasily. And to take your study into consideration as well, you initially didn't do horticulture no. studies. So what actually made you change and bring some of that incredible background that you had with your family growing up with gardening? What made you actually change that course and want to get back into gardening? I uh, studied engineering, got a job. I worked there for a couple of years. And till then I was, what, 19, 20 years old. But I always loved architecture, but I didn't have the right guidance to get into the right field because I love to create. I used to do a lot of drawings of nature. But anyway, I, I worked at the engineering firm because I got into the infrastructural and I liked numbers, but I didn't like crunching the numbers as a lifestyle. I'd like to create. And uh, my boss then knew that I loved architecture and I was always creating. He was given an opportunity to go to a garden center. They had a little house and they bought out the car yard next door and they needed to convert that into a garden center, which I was given the opportunity to design. I fell in love. That was my first time ever, apart from being in backyards and front yards of homes. It was my first experience in a retail garden center and I was just in awe of everything around me. And I had made my decision there and then that was going to be my last project in engineering. I said, I'm quitting and I'm going to go and open up a garden center. I was studying classical music then at the same time. I got my diploma in music. Then I did a night course in horticulture. Then I didn't have time to study anymore. So I said to my lecturers then, give me a whole index of all the books that I need to buy for the three, four years that I've got to be here. And I'm just going to go home and study and do a crash course. So I spent six months studying and reading all the books up. But then from there on, it's really the people power. Everything that I learn is hands on. It's all good and, and proper to read up, but you really, really need to get your hands into the earth to experience and understand what it means to work with nature. It's a very good point you make, and it's a very heartening point to a lot of our listeners out there as well. Yeah. That you don't necessarily need to have the most conventional pathway through university. You can always change your mind and you can always change your career and you can go back to those passions that you had from a very young age. And you've been living proof of that. There's no reason why we can't change the course in life, our pathway in life, if we realize at whatever age we are, um, we're doing the wrong thing. We're not happy. So find where your happiness is and just do it. Just get on with it and enjoy it and chase it. So yep. in your broad experience, what has been some of the physical, psychological, and also the social benefits of being outside and gardening? It grounds you, mate. It just keeps you level-headed. It takes the stress away from all the thoughts and you going through your head. It actually keeps your body physically agile. You digest better, you breathe better because you're in an environment that's clean. We always preach and practice, you know, just chemical free, poisons free, all that stuff free. We don't need it. It goes hand in hand. Gardening, good food, good gardening, health, the environment, our well-being, it's all in one. You know, happiness, music, dancing. What the We all have a rhythm in our body. We all have a desire to feel good, eat good and look good and share good things and thoughts. You know, we all have our difficult times in life and we need to learn how to deal with those efficiently and effectively. So our show is about all things good. We're not a glamour show. People who offer me to show me their pristine gardens, we reject. If I have a quick photo and I see a $100,000 garden makeover with a few veggies in pots or even a garden bed, that's been done clearly by somebody else. It's a picture garden and that's not who we are and that's not what we want to portray across to people to see and learn from. We want, you know, people who recycle, who have, they've got two bob in their pocket but live like kings and queens because the produce they get out of there, you can't buy at your local supermarket. And if you're going to sit down at a five-star restaurant, Michelin restaurant, you're going to pay through your nose for the same food. And at the end of the day, it's called peasant food. It's simple food, basic food. Keep it simple, stupid, easy and enjoy it. And that's what it is about, trying to find all the right avenues and, and methods of educating people or giving them the inspiration to go and give it a go. And yeah. that's another brilliant message there about getting that fresh produce onto your own table and anyone can do it, which is really important as well. Now, yeah. how can our students actively garden while in lockdown? And for all those beginners out there, where is a good, simple place to start? If you haven't got a garden or you've just got a balcony, just a pot, a bag of potting mix, get a nice clean 
bag of potty mix. Don't buy the cheap. You get what you get. Look for something that's got all the right ticks on it. And keep in mind that the ticks only represent the minimum standard. It's not the highest of standards. Anything below that is rubbish. So when you get the red ticks, you're safe. You know, that's good. Um, if it says it's certified, even better. A pot, plenty of morning sun, a handful of seeds or a couple of seedlings. Look for reputable seed companies or seedling companies. But at the end of the day, if you're going to grow something, keep it simple. Keep it small. Lettuce is the simplest way of growing something. Um, the fastest thing too. Spring onions, multiple picking. So you don't need to have a large garden and you don't need lots of everything. If you've got your lettuce, you've got your spring onions, you've got your kale, two or three plants of each maximum for a couple of people, just continuous picking the leaves. Cut it to the ground. Never, ever pull out the roots until the plant's ready to die on its own. If it doesn't want to die, it'll keep pushing up new foliage. It'll keep harvesting. You'll never spend another cent for, you know, one year you'll spend 10 bucks on seeds, you know, at an assortment of seeds or swapping with people, and you won't have to replant for at least two or three years. That's the same with tomatoes. You know, that's the same with eggplants and capsicums. They last you two, three years. Don't pull them out. Just cut them to the ground and plant something extra next to it and let them become a nice little flowering edible garden that's continuous picking through every season. Oh, look, 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 look at the seeds. How many plants would you like, sir? It's like the one potato, two potato, three potato, four, one spring onion, 10,000 more. Growing it yourself, folks, is the best way, isn't it? You get to harvest it and eat it straight fresh from the garden. It's always fresh because you grew it yourself and that's what you want to do. Keep it real, keep it fresh and keep it safe for your family and your friends and yourself, obviously. Could you describe to us what sustainable gardening is and what are some of your most recommended sustainable gardening practices that you've been able to implement? The most important one of all is really understanding your soil, your garden, your garden beds are your big composting plants. You don't necessarily need to have an above ground compost bin or a, a compost bin. That's the most sustainable thing you can do is feed the earth and not turn it over because you break up that connection between microbes, fungi and all the living organisms in the soil and your plants. They do set up a very intricate network that has to rebuild itself every time you dig it and break it up. If your garden bed is, is light enough to have enough moisture and air get, getting through it, then just top dress it, leaving it alone and just feeding it as it needs to be fed when you need to feed it as a top dress is probably the safest and the most sustainable thing you can do for your garden and it gives your plants the better chance of growing more efficiently and mulching i can't stress how important it is to mulch it goes hand in hand with composting your garden just the blanket that keeps the moisture in the heat out and the heat in winter. So Now Vasily, on our show, we've spoken about the importance of ergonomic workspaces. In your opinion, Vasily, how important is it to incorporate plants and greenery into your workspace, especially for people without gardens, such as myself, as you can see behind me, and those who are working from home regularly? Do you like walking in the park? I do, Vasily. You like sitting under a shade tree on a nice sunny day. You like smelling the rose if you see the perfume coming through. Yeah. All that is true. Yep. Everybody does. So taking that outdoor element and bringing it inside in any which way or form you can is vital to everyone's good health and well-being. Uh, apart from, you know, oxygenating plants that are great for us, just the green life. They can't speak. They can't respond in that respect, but they can visually show you their happiness and sadness. And... Being around plants and looking at them every minute of the day, as I do here, I notice the subtle changes that occur from one day to the other. And that brings me happiness and sadness at the same time because I can see some of the suffering. And inside, when you walk into a room that's stark naked with just, you know, furniture, it's nice to look at. But when you put a bit of life into it, it brings the spirit out of you into the plants and the plants back into you. So that synergy connection that is our subconscious that happens it's almost like having a partner in your life. That connection with plants is, is vital for all us humans' well-being. You have to. We've got to stop thinking of ourselves as the humans and nature as a separate entity and everything else. We are a part of the whole environment, Mother Nature. We're not, we're not the humans and then there's Mother Nature and there's plant life and there's animals and creatures. No, 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 no. We're a part of the whole cycle. We've got to, we've got to understand where we fit in properly. And is there a final message you'd like to leave with our viewers today? <laughs> My <Maresi. laughs> I was waiting for it. That's brilliant. Very good job there, Vasily. Thank you so much for joining us today on Healthy Habits. No, thanks for having me. Stay safe, happy and healthy during this period of time. And would you be kind enough to play us out on the accordion?
Oh, cool. This one's for you, mate. <laughs> Oh, bravo, Vasily. Thank you so much for playing us out on your joyous accordion. <laughs> Take care, buddy. Remember, you can find all of our new episodes of Healthy Habits via the RMIT Sports website, the RMIT Sports Instagram page at RMIT Sports, and be sure to click the subscribe button on our YouTube page and also follow all of Vasily's content with Vasily's Gardening to Kitchen magazine and the website. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in a fortnight's time on Healthy Habits. Maresi!